Okay, when you have someone who's using echolalia, often kids with autism, but also there are many kids who use it who just have a processing style where they like to learn big chunks of language and then break them down into individual chunks of language and then learn how to combine them in various combinations. Sometimes this is called learning language in chunks or being a gestalt language learner or we sometimes even call them the noun levers because they're all about learning social language. But there's a lot of things that we can do if we want to support language who are language learners who have this style. The first thing is when they're saying a word in some sort of context, you really want to make sure that it's really clear that there's an immediate result. So if they're asking for milk and they can are allowed milk, they get a glass of milk or they get told not now. What we don't want to do is to start interjecting a lot of teaching and prompting in here because when I ask for milk, if I said some other word like la da blah, 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 we don't want to think that that's a request for a whole bunch of teaching and prompting. What we want is when we say milk, it's linked to the thing. If we say jump, it's linked to jumping. If we say mom jump, we want the kid to see mom jumping or mom laughing saying I don't jump. So that's the first thing that we can do. Just simply run with what they say. This isn't a moment to, we don't want to be interjecting teaching right there. The second thing that we can do is try to make sure that we model language at the same length that they currently are using. Now with typical language learners, you're always modeling language a little bit longer, a little bit more advanced. But for kids having a hard time processing it, if we make the language too long, they might see us saying something to our friend, but if what we're saying is so long that they can't imitate it, then they get stuck. So what we want to do instead is when our little language learner is watching us do things and getting results, if they tend to talk in one word, we'll use one, maybe two words. If they're talking in two words, we'll do two, maybe three words or three chunks. So for example, if somebody's currently saying things like train, then we're going to be making sure at least 50% of the time they get to see us say words like train and ball and jump and other words where we can get that reaction. If they're saying go train, then we're going to say ball drop, train go jump now so that they can see things at the level that they can immediately steal our language and try it out themselves. So we want to model language at their level. Sometimes we get tempted to do lots of, well, we could go do this or maybe we should do this and we give beautiful language, but that can come later. Number three, if a language learner is using big chunks, maybe they're saying something like Bob count to ten please. We don't know if they actually know this as individual words but we might say well we're going to in the middle of this game of counting to ten during height of seek or whatever we're going to show them where that word boundary is so we're going to say things like Sarah count to ten please. Mike Count to ten, please. Sarah, and each time you're seeing the reaction. I'm going to count to ten, please. And that's going to let them really see where that boundary is and how this chunk can go in and out and really help them show how the language grammar works. We might even substitute this thing. Maybe we're saying jump or close eyes or hide or whatever it is. And these are just things that we can do in the moment. We take a chunk that they just said and then we try to find some ways to demonstrate and model how we can substitute. And I kind of call this the chop and change. We're going to chop a section off 
and change it. The last thing we can do is what I sometimes call the anchor technique. And if a child's using mostly a single word, let's say he says go, like ready, set, go, he might have ready, set, or ready, steady, go, but that might be his only combination. So maybe you could say go fast, go now, don't go, go to mom, go to kitchen, go in, maybe there's a box, go out the door. So I take one word and I'm using it over and over and over and over and over again during an activity and I'm just showing some of these other words. These words might not be necessarily sticking but what will be sticking is where those boundaries are and how that word works and that's going to lead to the future. So just to recap, when we have a bit of echolalia, make sure that they have a real clear link between the word or friend phrase and the result. Make sure we're modeling language at their level so that they have language they can hear, process, and repeat and basically steal from us. When they get use nice big chunks, chop and change. Pick one section that you're going to change so they can get two or three examples. And last but not least, if they're using a single word, make sure we model and practice some different words that can lead in or lead out from that word. Thanks so much.